I've learned quite a lot. Owning land should be included in a million ways to die. In a country where land can be both a dream and a nightmare, Kenyans find themselves caught between two harsh realities. More than 20 unsuspecting land buyers were duped into buying non-existing pieces of land in Kajado, losing millions. A scam to defraud land buyers in the county has also linked the land registry. The founder of Thika-based Lesedi Developers, a real estate company, Geoffrey Kirago, was today arraigned in court to answer to charges relating to fraud. As unsuspecting buyers fall prey to ruthless scams on one front, Genuine landowners face relentless grubbers who stop at nothing to seize their property on the other. It is at the point now of showing members the beacons, which had been already been planted, that we experience another cremant on the same land. That's a window monyere. Window ni yanganya shamba. Window monye shamba zas. We couldn't reach our lawyers and we couldn't reach anybody to help us. So we said, that's fine, we'll salvage what we can. Everybody was traumatized because the people were so wild. <laughs> Actually, they were so foul that at one particular time they said they would beat me. In this episode, we uncover unsettling realities in land acquisition where deceit and greed clash in a quest for ownership. Basically, you become a country that is full of anarchy. There's no law, there's no order and there's no value in land. When it comes to understanding the law, that is one side. When it comes to land, soil, Kenyans have this other relationship with soil. This time round, Ninajenga a palatial home. Hapo Kisum. Skuna a forty by eighty, fifty by hundred, hundred by hundred. Nani Karibuna Barawara. Burati Maguta Maguta. Imambo Enua Kununua Mashamba Kwa DM. Kenya's real estate market is a buzz. Companies, media personalities, musicians and social media influencers are all in the race to get the attention of potential buyers. The elites are buying land for speculation. Uh, all, land, uh, all land between uh, Kitengela and Namanga is already bought. But it's not bought for farming. It was farmland is bought for speculation, including deeper into the interior, more than 20 kilometers inside. That's what the urban elites have done. If you look at uh, the rankings on doing business index, they put property enforcement, uh, that's pretty much around land, as one of the key factors that investors uh, pursue the most. The competition for land has got so stiff that the value of land has become like a magnet. It tempts anyone to want to deal with land, to want to own land, to want to get it regardless. As rapid urbanization and development transforms Kenya, the pursuit of land as a lucrative investment has also created opportunities for land grabbers. Among the areas they target are peri-urban regions thriving with the potential for lucrative gains. time land buyer this is the deal for you why One i've been shying away from buying property <laughs> for obvious reasons uh, i had tried it before it didn't work out and then i said uh, this is the time to really go at it uh, on another level i found a land that was going for a very good price of course not cheap it was within uh, the range so i said yeah i would consider uh, purchasing it <laughs> hatuwezi save pesa vizuri sababu hata kama ukiwa na pesa ukiziwacha bank hamna kitu zinaza sasa tukaona ni vizuri tu tunanunua mashamba alafu ndio sasa tujiendeleze ndio hizo mashamba hata ukipata unaweza uza alafu ufanye jambo la muhimu hata kusomesha watoto pia pia kujenga meet elijah girimani a media professional based in nairobi kenya 
and Jefferson Murote, a retired civil servant. Although they were complete strangers a few years ago, their connection today is forged by their shared experiences. In the year 2020, Elijah, Jeff and 38 other individuals, all members of the Obora Housing Cooperative Society, followed up on a seemingly lucrative deal for land in Siokimau shared to SACO members. They all hoped that this would be their ticket to land ownership. However, their dreams hit a wall, quite literally. When they visited their land in Mavoko municipality, Machakos County, they found that someone had erected a perimeter wall on the land and claimed it as their own. Tulipata kumbe hawa walikuwa tawamejenga na ni perimeter wall ndi waweze kunyanganyana vizuri. These people were really coming for us and we were shocked. Where, who are these people? How did they get to know we are at the property? So what is the back story? Who were these other people? And how did they acquire the said property? I saw how many people got duped. I decided I'm never going to buy land. But then again, you know, with time you say, wait a minute, I'm now, I'm now 40 years. How long will I say I will not invest in land? Back in 2018, as Elijah was contemplating on his future, he made a decision. You know, when you get older, you start thinking about your life and where you want to be in two, three years. <clears throat> so um, I, of course, made some money in, uh, in, in the business that I was doing. Um, things were good, life was good. So I said, hey, you know what? It's time to scale up. It's time to buy property. I shopped for land. And as you know, Nairobi, we, we place where people are really investing in land is towards Mombasa Road, Siokimao, Kitengela, the river. So I said, that is a place I would want to see myself settling down. So I went, asked people around, did my due diligence, knew how much the property goes for around that area. And I spoke to different people. And of course, the first people to speak to is family. So I said, let me ask my sister, because she lives in the area. Uh, and I said, uh, she's the first person that I will go to. So I went to her, asked her if she knew anybody who was selling off land. And of course, I started uh, seeing several properties. And you know, the place is, is growing. The place is um, very affluent. Uh, a lot of developments coming up. Siokimau, located within Mavoko constituency, Machakos County, is where their story begins. Situated approximately 18 kilometers south of Nairobi's central business district, this residential and commercial area has evolved into a thriving center for real estate development and investment with ease access to key transportation hub such as Mombasa Road, the train station, the expressway, Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, among others. I went and found out that there's a SACO. Kenya Bureau of Standard uh, has a SACO called Ubora SACO. They were um, disposing of some land in Siokimau Katani area. So I said, this area is perfect because there's a red ne road network, it's near to a shopping center, you tick all the boxes for an ideal property. So we asked for the documents that the SACO had, and they really gave us. They showed us we purchased this property in this year. Uh, these are the rates that we've been paying to this property. The person who sold this property is still alive. You go to the land ministry, you get to search the property, and you know this land belongs to so-and-so. You have the confidence because it's the government prescribed way of verification. Of course, uh, I did my due diligence. I went, I was shown the paperwork, and then I went and made the payments. Elijah had developed a trust in circles, firmly believing that acquiring land through them was a more hassle-free experience. Jeff too shares the same belief. Mi mamba ya land in katika ina ni katika hii nchi yetu imenyogopesha sana. Huwa huwa liko mwangalifu sana kwa sababu huwa naogopa sana sana kwenda kununua ni kitu kama shamba nikiwa peke yangu sana sana na ni search plots na sana sana vile ni naona ni basi kuna ukora mwingi ndio nikaamua niwe na jaribu kuna nini kununua through circles. Unaona sasa Having worked for 35 years at the Kenya Bureau of Standards, a government regulatory body, 
Jeff's association with the Bora Housing Cooperative Society is grounded in its very origin. In fact, to menua sehemu nyingi sio tu Nairobi peke yake. Tumenua mashamba sehemu za Kisumu, huku Nairobi tumenunua sehemu za Kajiado, Kinangong tumenunua. Tumenunua tamalindi. The work of Borough and Cooperative Society is to purchase land on behalf of the members, subdivide it and pass land as plots to the members. Joseph Gashanja serves as the current chairman of Ubora Housing Cooperative Society, a welfare organization at KEBS. The idea was mooted in 1994, and around 1995 we had come on board as a limited firm. Yes, and uh, when that happened, we registered members. The Ubora Housing Cooperative Society now registered members who are interested with settlements. Before the year 2020, Ubora Housing had a solid track record of helping their members acquire land through successful sales and transfers. However, the parcel of land codenamed Mastermind 15, located in Siokimau, measuring approximately five acres, initially appeared to be no different from the others they had sold, until things took an unexpected turn. Like any other land, it was floated here by an agency and we realized uh, the vendor was the daughter of one of our staff, old staff, old and retired staff member, yes, uh, whom we negotiated with and eventually purchased this land after due diligence was followed. Once identified, we asked members who are interested to register for the process and deposited money. Having done that, we carried on to completion of purchase and uh, a transfer was made in favor of the society. That is a browsing cooperative society with no hindrance. Under the Registration of Titles Act, the parcel reference number 12715709 was initially granted to Siokimau Farm Limited on 9th August 1983. The company had 713 shareholders, with each share translated to a five-acre piece of land, and every member was granted a share certificate for their designated plots. Nduko Ndunda is said to hold a share tied to the parcel 12-715-709, a plot transferred to her from Siokimau Firm Limited on 25th October 1989. On 24th March 2021, the property changed hands again this time to Obora Housing Cooperative Society. Subsequently, it was subdivided into 40 plots with titles issued ranging from IR number 234.510 to 234.549. It's not something that happens overnight, so it, it took some time. It took some time to, to really go through the process. And uh, after about two, three, four months, the SACO really contacted us. Uh, he told us that uh, we should wait for some notification so that the land, uh, we can go for balloting and identify our plots. They did it, true to their word, they did that. And um, we went for the balloting and we already knew our numbers, our, our plot numbers. So everybody was excited. So we were 40 people, uh, really eager. And you meet your future neighbors and you see, okay, this, this is a good group of people now. So it was all good. Your land is uh, easy. Iko na pesa mzuri sana. Kwa sababu kama tukua tukinunua 2.3, saa hizi yu olandi kuyuza, lazima uyuze kwa kitu 5M or 6M. Nasa, sasa pesa kama hizo nikikusanya, nikikusanya na nini, yongeza zingiri ambao pengi niko na olandi kama mbili au tatu, so unawana sa utazafanya jambo na nini, lamana. At this point, they were all on the brink owning what seemed to be prime real estate. However, after a year of waiting, their titles hadn't been issued. When they probed for answers, they didn't like what they were told. They told us, unfortunately, uh, we have a problem. 
Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> and um, we went for a meeting. They told us that uh, somebody is trying to grab the property. But since the titles are out, uh, we should get together, uh, maybe uh, get a proper briefing, and then see what we can do about, about that property. But by this time, uh, we had rumors that somebody has fenced the property. In fact, to leave it one, kind of Kayona, you can't plot young, you are in your Mamoja Kwanza, Kambo and Yoi, or to conjure back on my beacon skiller kit. Sasa Bada, Bada, as you are Kimoja and you must get any. How I mean, Yako, or my boys only, beacons, killer kit. It's the official plot viewing day. There were people guarding the property, some, some two Maasai guards um, and two Somali guards also. So we asked them uh, who gave them the, the work and they told us uh, uh, somebody, uh, they mentioned a name, somebody called Joel. We had no doubt whatsoever that this property is uh, legitimately owned by the circle. So we decided to, to work with the circle to see what we can do. To, to, to reclaim the property. So in the meantime, um, the guards that helped us demolish the gates were arrested and thrown into jail. They were arrested for malicious damage of property. According to a charge sheet dated 6th June 2022, two security guards who had been hired by Ubora Housing Cooperative Society to protect the property based charges of malicious damage to property where they were said to be involved in the damaging of a perimeter wall in the metal gate valued at 1.6 million, the property of one Joel Musioka Paul. So the first time uh, we came to record, uh, of course now, uh, he's, he didn't show up in court. So we asked for the court to release the guards because um, until it's proven in court that uh, who the ownership is proven in court, they cannot be in custody. So one of the guards was released and then the other one was released later. We pursued the case further, but last year in December, this person, the complainant now, uh, the, the, the alleged owner of the property, uh, withdrew the case in court. And the reason he cited is, is because he has forgiven he has forgiven the people who are trying to uh, to to to, de to demolish the, the gate, and uh, you know, um, and because of that, and also he's pursuing treatment in South Africa. He cannot be able to attend court proceedings. We had gone there with the surveyor to identify our plots, so now we were dealing with two issues: the issue of identifying where our individual plots are, at the same time also finding out who is this who has fenced our property. The 40 buyers were now bound together, not by ownership, but by an unfolding saga of apparent deceit. You can imagine 40 people. Uh, we all don't know each other. Uh, we all come from different backgrounds. Some are living out of the country. Some are living outside Nairobi. Um, some are retirees. A very unique mix of people. So what we did is uh, we got ourselves organized into a WhatsApp group. So we started communicating exchanging ideas on how to go about that issue. It is at the point now of showing members their beacons, which had been already been planted, that we experience another claimant on the same land. He said that he has been sold by the owners who are Siokemao Farm Limited administrators. Named in honor of Siokimau, a prominent Akamba leader, this ancestral land of the Akamba community was taken over by colonialists and turned into a ranch for European settlers, resulting in the dispossession of the local people. Nevertheless, shortly after gaining independence, Siokimau Farm Limited was established in 1965 and is said to be the original proprietor of approximately 4,000 acres of land, the very land upon which the Siokimau estate and the neighboring areas now stands. In 1983, the company was granted a 99-year lease from the President of the Republic of Kenya. 
However, the course of its history took a significant turn on 26 July 2013 when the company's shareholders approved a special resolution that the company be voluntarily wound up. As a result, on 26 July 2013, Tsukimao Firm Limited was formally dissolved as confirmed by Gazette Notice Number 11485. We started again asking ourselves, who are these people who know everything that is being done by both the circle and ourselves? Enter Isaac Mohammed Ibrahim, who also claims ownership to the property. According to his certificate of title, the plot was purportedly transferred to him by Siokimao Farm Limited on 16th November 2021. About three months later, on 14th February 2022, another entry was recorded in the said title, changing the ownership name to one Isaac Hassan Abdi. This was eight years after the official dissolution of Siokimao Farm Limited in 2013. They claimed to have a rights of administration and they developed their own title. I would like to know how. I still don't know. A parallel one and passed it to a Mr. Hassan. If anything came up during due diligence period, we wouldn't have proceeded to buy. Why would you buy land and you know there's a problem? You wouldn't. This is a reputable organization. Kenya Bureau of Standard with our mother is a reputable organization. We don't deal with the full ourselves. So. We did a thorough search of the previous titles. As much as we already had done it, we had to do it again to confirm that this is the updated record, the, the reports, the, the records as, as to the land ministry. So everything came clean. And the circle told us they even had a caveat that was put into that property. You know, it's a long job before a title can be passed to a, to a member. We are talking here of transferring the rad from vendor to browsing society and then uh, having had that acquire all necessary approvals both from the county governments and the national government and then going ahead with the survey of Kenya who have registered the survey scheme before even you think of a title which eventually was made. Members today as I talk have individual titles. So 40 plots, 40 titles of individual members are there, duly processed at the land's office at the house. On 10th August 2021, in a local daily, purported directors of the now defunct Siokimao Farm Limited raised alarm over former officials who were allegedly selling parcels of land without the owner's consent. Hello. Hello, hi. Yeah. Is this uh, Siokimao Farm Limited? Yeah. Who am I speaking to? Masila. Masila. Paulo Masila Kemem. Paulo Masila? Yes. Okay. Uh, my name is Joy Kirigia. Yeah. Mimi ni mwanahabari kutoka Africa Uncensored. Uh. And I wanted to verify a few details uh. regarding one of your parcels of land. 127. Yes. One five. Yeah. Seven zero nine. Seven zero nine. Yes. Uh huh. So this this land pertains uh, two claimants. Mm. One of whom is Ubora Housing Cooperative Society. Yeah. And the other is one Isaac uh, Abdi Hassan. Fine, Ivy. Mm hmm. Me koko tine inje koko tine inje machakos. Mm hmm. Okay, so utaeza kuongea lini? Leo ama sikuingine? No, kesho. Court documents gathered by our investigative desk indicate that one Paul Masila Kimeu represents the active Siokimao Farm Limited as an administrator. Documents tuko nazo zinasema Siokimao Farm Limited ndi uniuza shamba. Kwa hivyo nilikuwa nataka kukonfirm shamba muliuzia nani Ubora Housing, Sako, ama Muliuzia Ibrahim. Sika weza kujumuza na wewe, anything kuhuzu shokemao, kuhuzu watu, yule mtu hiko ndane, na yule mingine alikuwa nasema shamba, aliuziwa zamane. Hii kesi bado ijaingia kotini. Hiko kotini? Neza nipati information about it. 
Na, unajua ile swali unaniuliza kakaka alikusana. Waachia hapo kwanza. Lakini unajua Ibrahim. Aha. Kafadhali. Mne nataka tu ni confirmie unaweza kuuliza hiyo shamba kwa Ibrahim, Isaac. Na, safadhali nakwambia tuache hiyo mazungumzo saa hii. Are we together? In a letter dated 15th July 2021 allegedly from the Ministry of Lands, Senior Assistant Chief Land Registrar N.D. Nyambaso confirmed the registration of the land reference number 12715709 is under Ubora Housing Cooperative Limited following a transfer recorded on 24th March 2021 from the previous owner Nduko Dunda. However, Three months later on 18th November 2021 another letter purportedly from the National Police Service signed by one Peter Mbebi on behalf of the District Criminal Investigation Officer at the River claimed that after investigating the authenticity of the documents presented the land's current ownership belonged to Siokimau Farm Limited This assertion seemingly referencing the Ministry of Lands and reportedly confirmed by one Mr BL Longolenyang a land registrar We are aware of course that um, within the DCI and so on and so forth you tend to have uh, a special unit dealing with uh, land fraud and so on and so forth but at the end of the day they remain an investigative uh, agency and uh, they need to work with the various professionals to be able to conduct or do uh, the required due diligence and to provide the necessary interventions without resulting into such kind of actions which lower the confidence in terms of property rights and encouraging of people to invest in such kind of entities almost a year later on 16th September 2022 an internal memo allegedly from Farida Karune the former cabinet secretary for the ministry of lands noted fraudulent efforts to execute an unauthorized subdivision allegedly sanctioned by Isaac Mohammed Ibrahim who claimed to be the registered owner The memo further made reference to the previous letter from the senior assistant chief land registrar affirming Ubora Housing's ownership and called for an immediate stop to any ongoing subdivision processes The subdivision in question was carried out between March and April of 2022 by one Patrick Opio a licensed surveyor However just 4 days after Farida's directive on 20th September 2022 Opio wrote to the director of service urging the suspension of his documents processing expressing concerns about the authenticity of his papers some decisions that the courts have been making that uh, somebody needs to do much more due diligence and the question is how much of due diligence is enough our Uh, documentation with regards to land is largely still um, manual of course uh, there is the digitization process under Avishasa where they've been able to capture most of the land records into the system and so you are able to see uh, what you call the root of the title you are able to establish this title uh, started as Uh, this and then it was eventually subdivided and so you're able to trace that route which then uh, makes it easier uh, to conduct due diligence uh, but well not all titles that has happened so there still remains a gap people who were coming to buy from you they wanted to know exactly who owned this piece of land mm-hmm. and the reference point is the title deed and here you are you've been saying recently that the title deed is the most useless document in a land buying transaction what on earth do you mean i mean it sounds alarmist huh? very um <laughs> understandably um so there's uh, the presumption also in law that uh, whoever holds that title holds an indefensible title unless uh, someone can prove uh, certain things that was obtained through fraud and, and other issues uh which then again uh, creates uh some sort of uncertainty because uh under the constitution property that has been fraudulently acquired or corruptly acquired does not enjoy uh the constitutional protection bado hawajatoka huko 
tunaona sasa sasa kwa hivyo ni watu ambao wametutazitiza mno na pengine hatutaki mambo ya kwenda kotini kwa sababu tukienda kotini tunaogopa sana hii mambo ya ni ya injections na stays huko kotini unaona sasa na huwa hizo huwa zinapatia hawa nani hawa makatels njia ya kuweza kunyang'ana kwa sababu unaweza pata pengine sasa wao wameshaingia huko sasa koti kisema na ni injection ikiwekwa tunaona kuta nini sasa na hizo pesa za kuanza kufuata mambo sisi hatuna we felt helpless and um, we have been thinking of what more can we do because we already have the ownership and we do not know who we can run to as Elijah, Jeff and 38 other Kenyans continue their struggle to reclaim their property amidst numerous challenges, we look into another bewildering case that emerged just two years after their ordeal, shedding light on a disturbing trend of land disputes. There's a lady called Lucy who bought land in 1987 in South, South Sea. Uh, she has the title been there for over 30 years and she actually has DNA documents. One day, some people show up in her land and they have eviction orders. Guys, you cut it to your karata. Do you know I even stopped going around South B? Because I don't want to see that plot. Anytime I see it, I feel angry. I feel desperate. I feel like, I, in fact, I was saying I don't even want to hear about these readers. What are they for? Criminals should be afraid of the government. But in Kenya, the criminals are protected by the government. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Kusham kona bele nyuma. Left, right, left, right, left, right, squad, hot, right turn, turn that is, squad chain, turnings move to the right, about turn, turn that is. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, sir. Uh, we make sure that as we continue with our training, that we make sure that we understand what our responsibilities are and what is expected of us. That our job is to safeguard the property and the life of our customers and our clients. Meet Edwin Mashira, the general manager Everady Security Guards Limited and his dedicated team of security professionals. Their yielding commitment to protecting others though carries a tragic irony. Not too long ago, they faced a difficult situation where they couldn't safeguard their own property. This is where we are currently operating from. Uh, due to the circumstances that, you know, befell upon us, uh, we had to find somewhere where we can, you know, put our equipments and our uniforms and all that stuff and set up our places of operation. So I'll just take you around. You'll see some of the semi-permanent structures of where we're currently housing ourselves. A command. Oh, I'm a kuja. So, hello. So, okay. These are some of our vehicles that uh, we use in our field work for supervision. Um, uh, this is where we keep them for now. A far cry from the shed that we used to have when we used to be in our offices. This is now my current office where I operate from. Um, at least somewhere I can sit down and plan for the work of the day. So it's a semi-permanent structure but you know it keeps the work going, keeps the company going. Having established themselves in South B in Nairobi County for over 25 years, Everady Security Guards Company now operates from these temporary structures after they were forcefully evicted, leaving behind not only their place of business, but also relinquishing a part of their dreams. And we still have to continue doing that which we've been doing for the last 25 years, regardless of the circumstances. So for now, it works for now, but you know, 
we're looking forward to getting back our land and getting back our offices and doing what it is we do best, which is security service delivery. So I look forward to that day coming soon. Juan Jose Camango accessed the RTS and interfered with the resort contained therein. This also turned out to be no more than hot air. On 5th September 2022, as Kenya's Supreme Court delivered its judgment on an election petition before it, police officers and a group of people stormed the Everady offices in South B, claiming to be in possession of an eviction order that had been issued on 26 July 2022, but had been left and executed until the day. At around, I think, 9 or 10 o'clock, we were informed by the, our guard at the gate that the police are at the gate and they want to enter the premises. So we didn't understand what the problem was. So we said, okay, let them in. These are the police officers. We have nothing against them. So once they entered, they entered with a mob of people, uh, more than 50 people. And once they came, they showed us uh, a document that they claimed was a court order and said that they have expressed instructions to evict us from this land. And once we asked them, why are you evicting us from our own land? This is our land. They say that's not a matter for us to discuss here. For us, our job is here to enforce an eviction order. If you have any issues, go to the court and state your case there. And it was the day of the Supreme Court verdict. We couldn't reach our lawyers and we couldn't reach anybody to help us. The court order allegedly issued by Principal Magistrate Edgar Kagoni at the Milimani Commercial Court contained two directives. One, it restrained the Everady security guards company, their agents, employees or any other parties from entering, remaining on, offering security, trespassing, posting public notices or otherwise interfering with the Esteem Energy Limited's quiet possession of the land reference number 209-22-665. The second order directed the OCS Industrial Area Police Station to ensure compliance. So when you try to look at the eviction order, we saw that it's referencing a different title number from what we know is ours. So we tried to tell them that maybe you have the wrong place because we have our own title and this is our land. But they could not hear any of it and they told us they've given us a few hours that maybe by within four or five hours we should have removed all our things and should have left the premises. They did not even give us time to try and get our things together and try to get out. The 50 or so people they had with them suddenly invaded our, all our offices, breaking doors to the offices that were locked, forcefully carrying things out and throwing them outside. And some of them even stealing some of the things, putting like some uniforms, others are put, taking our, like your security company. So they take some of the boots, they wear them, they take some of the jackets they see, they wear them, and we're trying to salvage our materials. They showed no care for anything that was in our possession. <laughs> uh, I a video, but... Since we occupied the land and the company was operating from there, no one has ever come there to suggest that they won't even request to buy the land. Nobody ever came there even to claim ownership to the land and nobody even ever came to tell us that there's a case going on with this land. And we had never even charged that land, the title to that land, to any bank ever since we occupied the land. So as far as we know, nobody has ever showed interest on the land. Everready Security Guards Company Limited was officially incorporated on 21st July 1980 and it had two directors, Peter Dirango Nderi and Zakayo Washira Gidae, who is Edwin's father. Initially, the company operated from an office situated near Jivanji Gardens in Nairobi's Central Business District. In 1997, under the leadership of Lucy Gadoni Washira, Edwin's mother, who served as the company's managing director at the time, the process of acquiring land for the company in South B was initiated. According to their certificate of title, the property bearing the land reference number 2095924 had a number of previous owners. However, on 22nd September 1997, it was transferred from Diamond Trust Bank Kenya to Everady Security Guards Company Limited, where they have been operating from since. I have been operating this company from 1995 
It was originally started by my husband in, 19, in 1978. And uh, for certain reasons, I had to come and help him to run the company. And uh, in 1999, my husband passed on. We, cont we continued working. And uh, in the presence of my children visiting, visiting their education, they also joined in the learning of this company. So we have been learning the company as a family, and the company has been doing well. After her husband's passing, Lucy assumed the role of CEO and has led the company since. But it was on the day of the eviction, standing amidst the chaos that she watched her dreams crumble with the property that she had dedicated her life securing. It was terrible. It, it looked like fiction. You, you know, it is like a movie. To me, it looked like a movie, actually. Because I have owned, it's me who bought that house. I know the house. I have owned that house all the years. So it looked like it's a drama. You can't even believe it, it was you. And everybody was traumatized because the people were so wild. Actually, they were so foul and that at one particular time, they said they would beat me. And the, my son is part of that group. He said, with another, the accountant, he said, you cannot touch her. You are not going to touch her. Those documents, they wanted, we have them. We can we possess them, they are ours, they are under the protection. So, me to me that day, I've never experienced that kind of a... It was terrible. Actually, I don't even know how to... Because I could not cry. I could not... I didn't have... Have you felt helpless? I was so helpless. But I thank God he held my heart. Because I think I would have melted away. I would have died. But God gave me strength. And I told them, you know, you are taking that plot, you're not possess it. Because I never steal. I've never stolen, I never steal. And that plot belongs to us. Belongs to everybody, and nobody will take it. She was judged and heard. The magistrate actually did not even summon Lucy. And when Lucy was just minding her own business in her own land, the, the police came. You see, they even use the police. The police came and evicted her. Now, she doesn't occupy the land anymore. She was evicted, she lost her documents, her business was destroyed. Boniface Mwangi, also known as the People's Watchman, is a widely recognized human rights defender. So as an activist, I have a very big social media uh, platform. I have like millions of followers online and every day people send me their complaints. So I, I use my platform to highlight people's problems and to highlight injustices and human rights violations. Following Everady's forceful eviction, Boniface was one of the first voices to shed light on the family's plight through his platform, Sema Ukweli, dedicated to exposing injustices and human rights violations. The most powerful people in this country happen to be land grabbers. And today's story is about a lady called Lucy, born land in 1997 in South B. The land belongs to her. So today we are going to meet with the victims and hear their story. And the threshold for court orders are very low. And so the cartels have discovered they know how to shop for the particular ju judge or much to get a court order from. I was talking to someone very senior in the lands ministry and he told me even him at his level, he's also afraid of the land cartels because they work with the police and they can harm him. So you find sometimes even people who are in government who want to do the right thing they get scared of doing the right thing because they know that they can be harmed by the cartels and the police won't do anything about it. The people who break the law or issue illegal court orders don't get sanctioned. There's no consequence for their actions. And families out here crying for their land and being threatened and there's no justice for them. It's a sad situation. Boni's words aren't just empty rhetoric. They ring true for many others. 
but the eviction suffered by FRAD security company serves as an illustration of the very problems that he passionately highlights. They claim that we invaded them in July and uh, within three weeks they were given eviction orders to enforce and get us out of the land. While you see on our side, since we were evicted on 5th September 2022, we have been going to court and it's now almost going to like nine or ten months. We have not had been hard really. Every time we go, there's postponement of our cases. They claim that our guards, or let me say our company, went to their premises in July 2022, pretended to offer security services because they guess they did their research, you know we're a security company. And once we entered, we kicked them out. That was the story they gave. And they said that once we entered the land, we refused them uh, access to their property and we took possession of the land. Now that's the story in the statements that they took to court which makes me wonder how someone can just take a story like that and just give an order without doing any due diligence about it. So the person behind all these things is one Hassan Ibrahim Isaac. At the center of this saga is Esteem Energy Limited. According to the Registrar of Companies, Esteem Energy Limited was officially registered on 31st July 2020 with the sole director, Hassan Ibrahim Isaac. However, the property under land reference number 2092665, distinct from the original land reference number 2095924, was seemingly transferred and registered to one Ibrahim Mohamed Abe on 1st January 1958 from the government of Kenya. This alleged transfer took place during Kenya's colonial era prior to the nation's independence on 12th December 1963. On 21st March 2022, the parcel of land was then transferred to Esteem Energy Limited. I visited the Ministry of Lands. I got confirmation from the Adi Sasa side, uh, the one that does digital records. And even we did a search of our own land. And it showed that the land actually belongs to Everready Security Guards Company Limited. The story we found in court, we found that they have filed some picture showing that we invaded their land. Funny enough, the picture they're showing does not even resemble the land that was ours or the one they have taken possession of. The other thing I found was title that they claimed was theirs and it was claimed to have been converted from an original title. Now, the conversion references our own title, which we still have in possession and we have not surrendered it or done any form of change of user to warrant a conversion of a title. I have not had anything with anybody. I do my business honestly. I do what is supposed to be done. I do my payments where I'm supposed to do. So me to me, it is just a matter of um, people looking at, uh, at the house and the people getting in, into it and analyzing these people have no help. So we can attack them because we are the mighty one in this nation. We have the connections of the big people. And for sure it is a year and nothing has happened. The courts have no, nothing to tell us. The police officers have nothing to tell us. So it is their, their, their way of working and it is a system. Courts in Kenya are dead. It is just a matter of uh, corruption. There is nothing else that is happening in our courts in Kenya. To a certain extent, uh, there are instances where uh, the courts have been misused uh, to give orders of eviction or to deprive of uh, the lawful owners of a property uh, their right to that land. But then again, you must also appreciate that the court process largely revolves around evidence. The land fraudsters would uh, replace the genuine document with their documents and, pop and, and the ministry, when it comes to give its evidence in court, would then refer to the uh, fake documents as the actual genuine documents. You would find that uh, uh, those, those who engage in this sometimes even have managed to um, uh, corrupt uh, the land registrar together with the police and so it becomes an uphill task for anyone who wants to show that uh, their title is uh, um, genuine because the system is against them. 
And sometimes they are clever. They file applications after application. They go to the Court of Appeal. They, so they keep you going in litigation until either you get tired or by the time you are getting the final decision, the subject matter has been radically changed through uh, subdivisions and other things that it no longer makes um, um, that makes it extremely difficult uh, to finalize uh, that court case and get back the land as uh, it originally was. In the intricate dance between the law and land disputes, the system's vulnerabilities serve as the playground for exploitation by fraudsters who relentlessly deploy different tactics to derail cases, further prolonging the anguish experienced by the victims. You find out just a few people sitting in government offices can decide the destiny of many people with no feelings at all. It leaves one to ask ourselves, do we really love our country? Are we, is our country for sale? Is it that impunity and corruption is so rampant that those who are sitting in those ministries don't care about their fellow Kenyans other than their stomachs? Security agencies who are given the mandate to investigate these cases and to offer protection to legitimate landowners, you ask yourselves, are they sleeping with the enemy? Like in this hour, after the jury document, Dani, Dani Zao Ziko Lamlagani, no one saw. Dani Vizuri atawa opia wana jitoke za wanasema ili shamba wao wera iyo sa mnyaku sema ni lake ali litoa upande gani ali litoa kwa nani? Kwa fursa saka masisi sisi tu kona mtu ambaye tu najua nini ali uzi obora housing nani hilo shamba na bado yuko hai ingawaje bado nani na nafiki ni mzee sasa hizi. So you you wonder. Do you have a criminal government in power? Or is the government just protecting criminals to, for them to, to molest and harass and steal from innocent people? So basically, what's, what's supposed to happen? Criminals should be afraid of the government. But in Kenya, the criminals are protected by the government. So the people who are crying out for justice are actually victims. And guess who's been protected? The criminals. This is the Kenyan dream for a police service that serves the people and upholds professionalism. I'm happy you have mentioned professionalism because nobody, no police officer is trained to abuse the power, to abuse the rights of uh, Kenyans, to arm the Kenyan. The president has pronounced himself on this. Kila mimi nasema, all of us, let us enjoy our existence. Yale mali umetafuta kwa BD, tutachunga iyo mali. That is the message we are sending. As I take charge of the National Police Service, Honorable Chief Justice, criminals out there, please bear with me because we will face it. We are not threatening anybody, but we are stating things as they are. I've learned quite a lot since this, this is my second property uh, to invest in, especially in Nairobi. Owning land should be included in a million ways to die. Why I'm saying this because apart from your due diligence, you expect, you expect uh, naturally that the government agencies put into place should be able to work in favor of its citizens. You can imagine how many Kenyans out there have been discouraged to invest in land. Or how many Kenyans out there have been duped. How many of them are depressed today because of grabbers. Land grabbing should be classified as a national disaster. As landowners and buyers in Kenya face trials and complexities of land grabbing, a fundamental question lingers. Who ultimately benefits from this situation and who pays the price? 
Stealing of land during the titling process has never been punished. So today, even when there is titling process in, you know, in any part of the country, there is still elites who use the titling process to accumulate more land by stealing small pieces of people or even seeking to be placed or settled in a place where the poor are located but it's a better place and then kick out the ordinary people and take them to very infertile areas or even steal their land outrightly. In fact, I'm going to go sana. I'm going to go to the city. 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 Ni kwa taka sasa pengine ni kusanye ni waziweze kunisaidia. Lakini sasa vile haya mambo bado ni hayajani hayajatatuliwa bado saa hizi naadhirika nayo kwa sababu bado sijisikii vizuri. It really affected me cuz I had put all my hopes that you know after this investment of course you will grow with years. Land appreciates. I'll develop the land can I can be able possibly to you know uh, have the ability to raise capital for other businesses by investing in this land. I know some people in our group have bought two or three plots. You can imagine how much they are fear of losing. They are afraid that they're gonna lose. So personally, it has made me very skeptical towards property investment in Kenya. And those employees are also going to lose their jobs because they are not keep people that have no place to go. We lost so many jobs because they, can't, they, they could not get us, they could not even arrive to our office. Our operation system were destroyed. The six million I paid last year from the audit on tax, I can't pay it. I have none to pay. So as long as they are doing, supporting the ill and the evil in the nation, they are also destroying the nation. Because without tax, yes, you come and pick my little things. But I used to pay a corporate tax of about six million. I can't pay it today, even if the audit is done, because the company has been destroyed. When questions come around the validity of ownership, um, it casts as passion on how the system works. It creates, uh, generates lack of confidence and can actually make investors uh, flee a country uh, because of that lack of certainty. It's a most unfortunate uh, scenario, not least for the business owner, whom it can be very traumatic. Most entrepreneurs put in their blood, sweat and tears into the enterprise. Uh, but also if you look at the people who benefit from the businesses, the employees, um, the national government that gets a revenue in terms of taxes. So it has very many layers of uh, destruction. Hakuna tena mambo ya evictions katika Nairobi. Kama kutakuwa na maneno, ni maneno ya relocation ambaye itakuwa ni kwa utaratibu bila ya mwananchi kuvunjiwa nyumba. Uwezi kutoka nyumbani alafu unarudi jioni unakuta masufuria barabarani na blangeti siju imekaa wapi. That one will not happen again. I already gave uh, very clear instructions to the management here of EPZ that all speculators, people who have held uh, titles to pieces of land here for 10, 15, 20, 30 years without developing them should be revoked so that we can give it to people who want to use this facility. What is going on here is false eviction. The exact crime Ruto promised to bring to an end in July last year. It's a gross violation of human rights. A recent wave of demolitions in Adi River, Machakos County, purportedly spurred by a Machakos High Court ruling, has led to the destruction of property, leaving many families without homes and in dire need. Not too long ago, Edwin and Lucy found themselves in an almost similar situation. 
While their circumstances may vary, the underlying thread of uncertainty surrounding land ownership in Kenya unites them. But often, the victims of land grabbing confront anonymous entities who lay claim to their properties while remaining in the shadows, a veil that further complicates the pursuit of justice. These people esteem energy. All we see is when we go to court, we see their uh, lawyers there. We've never seen the actual people who claim to be the complainants of the land and we don't even know where they are. These are faceless people and they use the system, they use the courts, they use the lawyers, they use the systems of government to do what it is they are doing. And they are actually stealing people's uh, land and destroying people's lives. It is, it is really a sad, a sad state of affairs that in this year, 2023, we are still talking about land grabbing in Kenya. How different are we from those who we call colonial masters that came into this country many years ago and grabbed land? How different? Our country is a country you can work hard and, and achieve. But because of the way the systems are, it becomes very difficult because they are killing the people who have the spirit to work. They are destroying the lives of Kenyans. They are saying bottom up, but it is not there. Or like now, let me tell you, if I were a very simple-hearted person, I would have died. Because even people are asking me, how, are you, how did you survive the situation? I told them, because I have God. So corruption is the only disease that we have in this nation. And I tend to feel corruption is a disease that cannot be cured because even the people who are supposed to fight against it are for it. Because if you are for it, you cannot fight a thief if you are a thief. And for us to have a difference in this nation, we also need to check the system of the leadership we erect. For Everedi Security Guards Limited, Esteem Energy Limited and its director, Hassan Ibrahim Izak and Ibrahim Mohamed Abe, whose name appears on their certificate of title, remains a mystery. Despite the ongoing court case, the individuals behind their eviction and the challenges they now face remain hidden behind their legal teams. Similarly, for Obora Housing Cooperative Society and all 40 of its members who invested in the Siokimau property, Isaac Mohamed Ibrahim and Isaac Hassan Abdi also linger in obscurity. None of the cooperative members or its leaders have ever come face to face with these shadowy figures. We wrote to Esteem Energy Limited to respond to the accusations made against the company and its director, Hassan Ibrahim Isaac, over the disputed parcel of land in South B, Nairobi. We did not get a response from them. We also made a follow-up phone call through their phone number. The number you have dialed is not in service. They were unreachable. We further reached out to their legal representatives, Osundwa and company advocates. Is this Osundwa Advocates? Yes, it is. Who am I speaking to? My name is Jean. How can I help you? I'm calling to make a follow-up on a letter that I had written to the company regarding one of your clients, the Esteem Energy Limited. Mm. I had set up a, a couple of questions seeking a right of reply mm. and clarification on a few questions concerning the case, mm -hmm. but I have not received any response yet. Okay, I saw the letter in the email and I uh, printed it. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Mr. Sundo has not been allowed for uh, Friday, so he has not seen the fire. Uh, so when, uh, when he comes, he will find it on his desk. Because we are publishing this story on Friday and we need, uh -huh. we need a response from them before then, uh, uh -huh. yes, because I sent the letter a bit earlier. Or alternatively, you can, you can share with me his contact so that I can reach out to him directly. Uh, this is the official line. Eh? So you're not willing to share his uh, contact where we can reach him directly? No, no, I, no, I don't, no, I don't give his personal number. But can you share with him this number so that he can reach out to me then? Yes, this number I'm going to write it in my message book. Uh, and what's your name? You said you are Joy? Eh? Yes, I'm Joy. Okay. Okay, let me put the message. By the time of this publication, we had not received any response from Esteem Energy Limited, Hassan Ibrahim Isaac, or their legal representatives.
the experiences of individuals like Edwin, Lucy, Jeff and Elijah loom large. Armed with legal ownership documents, they now find themselves unable to access their own parcels of land which are now occupied by the other parties claiming ownership. The question is, how many more will endure a similar fate in the days to come? It's a question that echoes across the landscape of Kenya's land issues, awaiting an answer that holds the key to a more just and secure future for landowners. This country is not for sale. It belongs to us and our children, their children and their children. It's imperative that we speak out. So I felt that if I don't speak out, who will? EverReady Security Guards Company have been engaged in legal proceedings for over a year against Esteem Energy Limited with the objective of having their case transferred to the High Court. During one of their court mentions on 25th October 2023, a ruling date was scheduled for this case, set for 16th November 2023. The dispute between Ubora Housing Cooperative Society and Isaac Mohammed Ibrahim remains unresolved with neither party having filed a legal case to date. There are claims that the Directorate of Public Prosecutions has ordered fresh investigations into the matter, as at the time of the publishing of this documentary, this had not been confirmed by the ODPP. In the next episode, we take a deep dive into the land-grabbing world, shedding light on the tactics they use and uncovering the glaring gaps in the system that allows them to operate with impunity. The main tactic they were using is to collude with people in land's office to issue them a title without any supporting documents. Hi. How are you? Yeah, fine, what, thank what, you. You are taking a photo? So your take name is Jackson, ah, what's yeah, your name? Yeah, take well. The mother file disappeared, reappeared probably in the year 2015 with new owners who had been allocated property already owned by the shareholders of this property. We can have the best system with the best uh, design and desires. But where integrity is lacking, then it creates a problem. I blame the government, I blame the police, I blame the lands ministry, I blame the judiciary, because they have been letting Kenyans down in these land transactions.